So I do have a feeling this is going to be quite a long video, possibly. Um, and this story is breaking down something that seems a little bit interesting, depending on whether or not you go beyond the superficial level. Now it says two more Harris aides leaving in addition to Sanders. So that's obviously aides to current Vice President Kamala Harris. So what you can see here is there are aides, very top of the line aides that are leaving the Kamala Harris campaign. Now, depending on whether you want to believe the superficial explanations or lack of explanations, um, or you want to dig deeper, which we're going to dig deeper, and that's why it's probably going to take a while to explain all of this stuff, because there's a lot of details on this. But it appears that there's not only been some, you know, tumultuous relationship simply within the vice president's office, but also between the vice president and the president's office, there seems to have been a lot of behind the scenes uh, bickering. So it says two more aides working in Vice President Harris's office are expected to leave their roles in the coming weeks in addition to the two high profile exits of her press secretary and communications director, a source familiar with the departures confirmed to the Hill. Peter Vells, who is the Vice President's Director of Press Operations, and Vince Evans, the Deputy Director of the Office of Public Engagement and Intergovernmental Affairs for Harris, are planning to leave those positions soon, the source confirmed. So you got two more going. Does Harris's office decline to comment? So they're not even they're not even commenting. You know, that's why I said lack of comments. Says the Washington Post first reported on their impending exits. The departure of Vells and Evans, who are expected to take new jobs in or close to the Biden administration, comes on the heels of news that Simone Sanders, Harris's press secretary, will leave the administration. Officials suggested Sanders had long planned to leave at the end of 2021. So again, these are the kinds of things where <clears throat> sort of damage control for the image. Um, but, you know, it says Sanders is the highest profile exit to date from the vice president's office, which has been beset by reports of dysfunction and frustration about her role in the administration. Sanders was the most visible voice in pushing back on those reports, and she has been a prominent surrogate for Democrats dating back to the 2020 presidential campaign when she worked for then-candidate Joe Biden. Harris's communications director, Ashley Etienne, will also be leaving her White House role this month. Etienne previously served as communications director for Speaker Pelosi and worked in the Obama administration before that. So lots of exits going on in the Harris campaign, uh, Harris office. So why is this going on? Now, again, the more sort of superficial explanations, which some of them aren't even like direct uh, coming from the Kamala Harris campaign, they don't really seem to be saying anything. They're not campaign office, you know, it's just there's no info on it coming out. Other things are just, oh, you know, they just want to go into different roles. You know, I read something that says, oh, you know, they just want another, a new challenge. You know, they already won. They want a new challenge. But the truth is there's a lot of behind the scenes, dra not drama, but just beefing and very tumultuous relations going on between the office of the president of the United States and the office of the vice president. And that's because Kamala Harris often feels a disconnect, but not only a disconnect, but her and her aides feel like she's not being given enough responsibilities and also they feel like she's kind of being left out to the wolves is what it seems like um it says exasperation and dysfunction inside kamala harris's frustrating start as vice president so this is a very long article but it goes into some really really good um details it says, worn out by what they see as entrenched dysfunction and lack of focus, key West Wing aides have largely thrown up their hands at Vice President Kamala Harris and her staff, deciding there simply isn't time to deal with them right now, especially at a moment when President Joe Biden faces quickly multiplying legislative and political concerns. The exasperation runs both ways. Interviews with nearly three dozen former and current Harris aides, administration officials, Democratic operatives, donors, and outside advisors who spoke extensively to CNN reveal a complex reality inside the White House. Many in the vice president's circle fume that she's not being adequately prepared or positioned and instead is being sidelined. The vice president herself has told several confidants that she feels constrained in what she's able to do politically. And those around her remain wary of even hinting at future political ambitions, with Biden's team highly attuned to signs of disloyalty, 
particularly from the vice president. So this that's big because I guess part of the disconnect between the two offices um, is that I guess Joe Biden is uh, he's worried about Kamala Harris's loyalty to him because Joe Biden is going to be laughably old. He's going to be hilariously old. Uh, when he runs again, I don't even know, he's gonna be like over 80 something, he's, you know, his brain is already half melted, we already know that, um, so it's, it's laughable, so the question is, I guess he's wondering if Kamala would run against him in the 2024 primary, which, that would be a huge, huge deal if she ran against Joe Biden in that situation, so, um, that's obviously a huge deal, and that's something that is going to strain your relationship, no matter how you put it, because that kind of distrust of loyalty, I don't even know why you would choose a vice president where you're constantly uh, worried about the loyalty, because that seems to run in the face of the cohesion and the relationship uh, that would that should exist between the president and the vice president, right? So it seems like a stupid move. Um, but essentially, it just explains uh, that she's, you know, who knows what she's going to do politically. Um, but so, you know, what's going on here, as it, you know, says here, it says Biden aimed to model his relationship with Harris on his own vice presidency and directed aides early in his presidency to employ her in a similar fashion. He arranged weekly lunches, just as he'd held with Obama, and invited Harris to join him for his morning classified intelligence briefing. Harris, meanwhile, threw herself into proving her commitment to the president and the administration using his relationship with Obama as her guide. Even then, some White House aides questioned whether Biden's experience as vice president would easily translate to someone with far different qualifications and skills and to a much different moment. After Harris became known in the first few months for often standing by Biden's side in the frame as he made big speeches, even after she'd introduced him herself, the West Wing appears to have overcorrected, so she has been with the president noticeably less. Not just in public, a week and a half ago as Biden and his aides and multiple outside allies rattled through calls all day trying to lock down wavering lawmakers ahead of the House infrastructure vote, Harris spent the afternoon touring a NASA space flight center in suburban Maryland. We weren't going to cancel our schedule just because of the House's foolishness, a Harris aide explained. That night, Harris was part of the small group Biden invited upstairs to the White House residence for the war room making the last hours of calls. The next morning, celebrating the bill's passage, Biden singled her out saying, a lot of this has to do with this lady right here, the vice president. But that's not exactly how things had played out. While she had attended some meetings Biden hosted with key lawmakers, there were many more that she didn't attend to the point that it was noteworthy that she made an uns unscheduled drop by one, uh, one session in that final stretch. Harris has, had only been in Washington for four years and to the White House just one time before being sworn in as vice president. Missing out on those main meetings deprived her of an important aspect of presidential apprenticeship from a self-styled master of how to actually get deals through Congress. Um, and so that that's what's going on there. Basically, uh, Kamala feels like she's not getting enough, uh, of a role in the, uh, office as vice president. So <clears throat> it says Harris has also complained to confidants about not being a greater part of the president's approach to the Afghanistan withdrawal, despite telling CNN at the time she was the last one in the room when he made the decision, leaving her without more to draw on when she defended him publicly. When Biden picked Harris as his running mate, he was essentially anointing her as the future of the Democratic Party. Now many of those close to her feel like he's shirking his political duties to promote her and essentially setting her up to fail. Her fans are panicked, watching her poll numbers sink even lower than Biden's, worrying that the even that even the Democratic vote uh, that the base Democratic vote is starting to give up on her. Kamala Harris is a leader, but is not being put in positions to lead. That doesn't make sense. We need to be thinking long term, and we need to be doing what's best for the party, said a top donor to Biden and other Democrats, imagining how to make the case directly to the president. You should be putting her in positions to succeed, as opposed to putting weights on her. If you did give her the ability to step up and help her lead, it would strengthen you and strengthen the party. And so it kind of goes on to talk about also... Um, you know, just, I guess, you know, some bitterness potentially going on uh, around the administration, but also um, around what was happening with the whole border situation. 
And it says, Harris's team was mad Biden had assigned her to handle diplomatic relations with the Northern Triangle nations in hopes of addressing the root causes of migration to the U.S., but gave her no role on the southern border itself. That became become uh, the most visible crisis in the early days of Biden's presidency, as unaccompanied minors overwhelmed federal government resources. It seemed like an all-around politically losing assignment, even though Biden had seen it as a sign of respect because it was the same job Obama had given him as vice president. As CNN has previously reported, Harris herself has said she didn't want to be assigned to manage the border, aware that it was a no-win political situation that would only sandbag her in the future. But Biden's team was annoyed that Harris fumbled answers about the border, including when she gave an awkward laughing response about not visiting it during a spring interview with NBC's Lester Holt. As some around Harris see it, the White House failed to come to her defense. That was especially galling since they had given her the unpleasant task on her first foreign trip of carrying the administration's harsh do-not-come policy, according to one source familiar with the workings of the office. A number of West Wing aides were mad when a few weeks later she made a sudden trip to the border after her staff gave only a few days warning to the White House, particularly after White House aides had taken time to knock down the idea that she would go as half-baked Republican spin. But this was in part a misunderstanding. White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain and a small circle of West Wing aides had known about the trip far in advance but had been careful not to spread the word to avoid leaks. So it looks like a lot of miscommunication going on, a lot of chaos going on within, um, you know, the White House essentially going on right now. A lot of disconnect in terms of their relationship. But overall, it seems like not only is Kamala Harris uh, really disappointed and, <clears throat> and angry that her role is not larger, but her supporters, her aides, all of these are people who essentially feel that She's not being given enough of a role as vice president. And then also they feel like when Biden does do something to give her role, like being set to the border, he does it in the wrong way, doesn't offer, still doesn't offer enough of a role to make it effective. And then also puts her in a situation where um, I guess she is left on an island where he's not going to help. So overall, I mean, as of right now, I would say this is a bad uh vice presidential pick because it seems like there's a lot of relationship strain going on within the white house this is something you don't want when you pick a vice president you want someone who's going to be clear with your agenda someone you're well connected with someone you can be on the same page with but when you're beefing this hard and there's so many communicational disconnects going on where a bunch of aides don't even know that you're making a trip like a really uh, important trip to the border or whatever like these are pretty important things so ultimately and all this is the last thing i'll read says biden aides have reportedly told harris aides they'd love her to uh, have her doing more and i asked the vice president's office to come up with plans for how to get her involved according to people familiar with the conversations though the staffs are on multiple calls per week west wing aides are often left wondering why there's not more follow-through aware of her stumbles and the ticking political clock Harris's chief of staff, Tina Flournoy, went to clean over the summer. They were drowning. They needed more help. So, you know, there's a bunch of this stuff going on. There's just a lot. So how you want to interpret this story about the Harris aides leaving, I would definitely say that there is a high likelihood that this isn't because of the superficial reason that, oh, you know, they're just looking for a new challenge. You know, it's normal for aides just to leave because... They want some new work. I think it's much deeper than that. And I think it just has to do with overall poor relations going on within the White House between the Biden and the Harris office. So, again, I think this is a bad pick if it's going to strain your relationship this much. But I don't know what the poll numbers for Harris are right now, but they did start to rise. I mean, they they pulled her away, as the article stated, from the public and from being uh, adjoined at the hip with Biden. And that actually appears to have really helped uh, Kamala Harris's numbers by pulling her out of the national spotlight. So I don't know exactly what the poll numbers are right now, but um, they were looking pretty darn good. They were looking pretty darn good last time I had checked.